Hello and welcome to 13th lecture of course on corrosion, environmental degradation and surface engineering. Topic of this lecture is environmentally assisted surface deterioration or degradation. This course is mainly focused on surface degradation and improvement or mitigating that kind of a degradation. And in this lecture we are focusing on environmentally assisted question comes what is the meaning of this? What are the factors which are really going to uh, deteriorate the surface? So, in number of earlier lectures also we have covered a few I mean the topics one way or another way, but trying to focus on complete environmental factor. In my view environmental factor is something like water, humidity, water uh, vapor, temperature it can be high temperature, it can be low temperature, it can be fluctuation in temperature. Sunshine is basically the UV radiation, ultraviolet radiations which really affect we have covered those topics. Chemicals it can be acid, it can be gases or it can be other toxic materials which really interact with the surface chemically. Abrasive particles which are mostly the dust particles or sand particles or some sort of debris which are available uh, in environment. And then uh, these are all going to affect or degrade the surface. How? Question comes we have individually covered these topics, but why we are covering in the new topic or maybe say new lecture reason being there is a some sort of more complexity compared to what we have covered. Now, sometimes we say the what are the sign of degradation particularly environmentally assisted surface degradation. We are able to show you the one kind of the bridge and then uh, you are able to see there is a some sort of discoloration and uh, there is a some sort of corrosion on the surface. So, what are the signs of the degradation? One of the easiest uh, to, one of, to find a sign is erosion or maybe say some sort of removal of the material. Sometimes we use the word the peeling, uh, maybe say delamination, sometimes we use the word cracking or uh, discoloration like in this uh, and then the bridge uh, in the, the photograph we are able to show the some sort of discoloration of the surface. Now, this all the, the degradations are happening because of the wind. Sometimes we have a very high velocity of wind uh, that acts like a media uh, to abrade the material. There will be naturally some particles in the air and then if the, those particles impinge strike again the surface naturally they will be eroding the surface. So, wind is a one of the main uh, source of uh, degradation, moisture or we say I use the word the humidity or water vapor, it can be rain or it can be fog also that is another one. As I mentioned the temperature, it can be absolute high temperature, low temperature or temperature variation. Reason being the many materials are made of the bimetal, trimetal and there may be a some sort of uh, expansion change in the expansion coefficients that will impact the degradation or that will enhance the degradation. UV radiation or sunlight is one of the most common uh, the source of degradation and we have been observing it. Now, why uh, separate topic for this reason being we have a three things here. One is a mechanical stresses as we use the word the wind and high velocity wind and a particle which are impinging on a surface naturally will be creating some sort of mechanical stresses. Chemicals or chemical interaction may be the gases or maybe the acid or maybe other chemical which are reactive with the surface they interact with the surface and degrade the surface. And another one is uncontrollable, uncontrollable environmental factors major point that these factors are uncontrollable. Rain is not in our control, sunshine or maybe the increase in temperature, lower in temperature is not in our control. We need to study, we need to observe and then make a system or uh, uh, components according to that. Now, that is a major point on here. Often this topic uh, may be in um, the books has been covered as atmospheric corrosion. Instead of we were using the word environmentally assisted surface degradation, uh, some chapters or in, 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 uh, chapters in the various books they use the word atmospheric corrosion. Now, I am trying to uh, elaborate that topic is a atmospheric corrosion means why they have been mentioning this. Say atmospheric corrosion is a frequently referred 
to as a results of the gases, particles, water vapor and chemical emitted from automobiles because as it comes in environment, factories, construction sites and maybe improper waste disposals, sewage, rain, oil spills of which can have a disastrous consequences on the material surfaces. Materials may be metal, it can be polymer, it can be ceramic, it can be composites. So, all kind of materials are indirectly or directly getting affected from atmosphere or atmosphere which has a number of uh, we say that, that the particles or um, the water vapor or maybe the gases which are coming from uh, day to day life like an automobile, factories, construction site that is what I have mentioned over here. Now, in this major point is comes as a water. Water plays a crucial role in atmospheric corrosion. Uh, even though ppm level of, of the water is ranging from 100 ppm to 10,000 ppm. So, the variation is a huge 1 to 100 percent something like that. And then uh, when water interacts with the metal surface, it can transport iron, it can uh, encourage the creation of electrolytes and cause a localized uh, corrosion event. And major thing is that when water vapor reacts with the sulfur dioxide or maybe say nitrogen oxide in the air, acids are formed. We know very well that acids can degrade the surface and maybe even sometime we heard the name like an acid rain also. So, I can say the most uh, metals are prone to acidic corrosion, it has in the or maybe say increases the degradation of its structure even the bridges which I showed a photograph in previous slide, uh, buildings, monuments, ships and then this uh, the, the we have a lot of degradation of those uh, and then the machines or vehicles or components or systems which are exposed to the environment. A major thing is that environment we do not have much control. So, we need to do uh, modeling or maybe say experiment keeping all the things in a mind and that will also provide a cost economic solution. I can make a very big elephant and I can use a lot of material, but will it be cost economic? If it is not cost economic, I will not be able to compete in a market. So, I need to give a very cost effective solution of those problems. Now, these are the water related coming to wind. We say the wind blown so sand or dust can harm the exterior of the outdoor machines or vehicles mechanical stresses because of the this uh, the wind related the particles are getting impinged on the surface and an addition that they, if they are wind is carrying the comes out of a gases naturally chemical interaction uh, will really affect the, you know, the surface degradation. That is maybe the reason why a number of books they give this uh, title of the this uh, lecture as a atmospheric corrosion. So, I, I try to just give a justification The next question comes is it a something new? How oh, people have not done earlier? No, it is not new. When we say the ancient Greeks believed that the basic element like water, air, earth and fire were main elements to degrade the metals and alloys. So, it is not a new as such. It has been studied for the years and years and years. Mentioning the water is one of the major source of the degradation. Air earth the particularly sand or maybe say that uh, soil and then the temperature or uh, you can use a fire. And there are a number of diagram and you will scan through the, uh, the websites or the books you will find a number of uh, uh, system which have uh, failed because of the environmental uh, corrosion or environmental uh, factors. Like in this case uh, here we are able to find out some sort of carbon steel tube. Um, which have a some sort of exposure to the water and getting a lot of corrosion on the surface that we can either we can uh, assume the natural or we can develop or we can really artificially create this environment to simulate what is uh, really happening and what kind of remedial actions are really required. Another example which we have already seen a uh, number of times is basically the uh, number of statues uh, which have been made from a bronze material and there will be some sort of oxide formation on that what we call a natural patina uh, which is formed on the natural uh, on the bronze surfaces. Here the major thing is the atmospheric gases uh, some sort of pollutant and contaminants which react with the, the bronze or maybe the brass or maybe the copper material and then make a some sort of layer on that and that, that, that if it is there is a wind 
naturally there will be particles and it will really erode the surface. So, material is continuously eaten away from a surface and we will be able to find out the pits, we will be able to find out the some sort of grooves and scratches on the surface and that is what we, we, we want to mention over here that is a natural phenomena it is happening like environmental assisted corrosion in this case. And sometime we, we also observe that uh, in the anything which has been uh, uh, digged into the sand and maybe say reason being um, it is inside the surface it can be foundation bold it can be foundation um, we say that uh, some sort of a structure maybe the, the, the some portion of the structure is under the foundation that will also be subjected to the corrosion or degradation reason being the sand itself is having a moist nature and it has also abrasive particle and then if there is a some sort of uh, uh, we have already studied something like a phratic and there is a possibility of the some sort of uh, you know, the, the uh, degradation happening on the that way also. High temperature fire and all we know that because of the high temperature naturally the activity will increase significantly and this has been shown here particularly the thermal insulation layer and below that there is a some sort of uh, corrosive layer on the surface uh, of a boiler or heat exchanger in this case. So, if I if I try to summarize in the uh, my words what I will say that there are several type of corrosions uh, which affect uh, metals uh, when they come in a contact with the water. Electrochemical corrosion which we have studied in earlier lecture also and the same thing occurs uh, when the water really um, and then the, uh, is present and it is really helping to make a, a act as an electrolyte and it can really dissolve the metal ions. Actually, it is providing some sort of a chain and transferring electron or ions from one surface to other surfaces naturally the corrosion will happen. So, what we can say that uh, uh, because of the this flow there will be some sort of uh, conductivity also and then if there is a dissolved oxygen or there is a chloride or there is a sulphates or some sort of other ions present then naturally the uh, uh, corrosion rate will increase significantly. So, here it is not only water, if, but if there is a some sort of dissolved oxygen, some sort of chloride, there are some, some, some sort of sulphates or other ions which are present in the environment, they will really assist corrosion, increase the corrosion rate. So, overall impact will be much more uh, magnified or significant in this case. And we have already have studied the heat or the temperature. So, we can say because heat promotes a chemical uh, process it provides a necessary energy to the chemical process and is naturally chemical process will be speed up and then uh, it may, may make a number of uh, uh, gases and maybe say iron which will be soluble at the high temperature, low temperature may not be soluble, but a high temperature this may be getting this uh, soluble. So, that will really uh, uh, increase the corrosion rate. So, I can say it can speed up because of the heat which is uh, really uh, increasing the chemical processes and making our gases and ions soluble, it will speed up the rate of the corrosion and particularly in the water present presence of water. So, uh, in this case, so we can say that if there is an increase in humidity, if there is an increase in the temperature, surely corrosion will speed up increase and then and there will be a possibility of more and more oxide layer getting formed and also if there is a wind and then that is a removing the surface of maybe the oxide. So, naturally the degradation will be much faster compared to what we have a design earlier. Now, another point comes when it comes to the industrial emissions a vehicle exhaust and maybe some sort of other pollutant which gets released into the environment or air they, they really make a corrosive product or corrosive compounds and then uh, that, that really uh, um, um, uh, we think about like a sulfur oxide or sulfur dioxide or nitrogen dioxide or chlorides and they, these are the really corrosive products as such and then uh, um, and it deteriorates the metals very fast compared to the uh, no, without uh, maybe say closely environment, close environment where we have a control on this kind of uh, gases. But in environment um, because the vehicles are increasing, exhaust gases are increasing naturally this will also cause a more and more uh, kind of a deterioration of the metals. Another one uh, as I mentioned that uh, metals which are buried inside the and the, uh, within the sand itself 
uh, and there will be more and more corrosion because there is a already there is a white water contain or uh, soil has a moisture contain and there has a uh, abrasive particles and then many times so we use uh, some sort of chemicals uh, uh, into the soil uh, for, for the various purposes. So, there is a chemical, there is a moisture, there is a temperature and there is a abrasive particles naturally all together will enhance the uh, material degradation rate. So, we can see that um, um, and then now this all action particularly related to soil will may, may vary reason being the soil chemistry will play a role, pH value of the, uh, the soil will play a role and then uh, it will, will enhance particularly when there are, if there is some sort of chloride or sulphate or maybe chemicals available. So, in this case we can say that we whenever we are designing something new or uh, we, we have a design earlier, but we come to the, uh, the understanding of the, this kind of environmental related uh, uh, factors we should account what will be the surface degradation and if you want a longevity or maybe say you want to enhance the life of those components naturally there, can, there, there is a need to consider all these factors whenever there is a need to uh, improve the life of the system. Now, uh, whatever I mentioned I am trying to summarize in uh, one of the bigger diagram in this case what I have mentioned here that what are the factors which are affecting the atmospheric corrosion. I talk something like uh, uh, moisture content we can, we can say that uh, moisture is on the surface and what is the really the wetness time uh, whether it is exposure is for 5 minutes, five, exposure is for 1 hour, exposure is for 1 day, exposure is for 3 months something like that. Naturally another one is the precipitation whether the particle in the water is coming as a water particle or maybe the liquid form or maybe ice form or maybe um, you know, we say that the vapor form. Naturally, another one is the dust, dust particle will have a different sizes and different velocities, it will affect temperature I already have a covered thought over. Sometimes we provide also some the another protection, what we use over the sheltering. So, there is also possibility when velocity will vary from one, on the one place to other places, that is why we say that whenever we are designing any system or any uh, the product, we need to really consider the various uh, uh, aspect of the environmental factors. And this that is why the, these environmental factors really will be you know, the important pollutant you know pollutant itself is a big domain and many many kind of the pollutants are pulse possible. And we have also another one but what is the initial exposure condition is there a, a protective layer protect coating on the surface if there is a some sort of a LED uh, preventive measures have been taken what will happen quite possible they you know, those preventive measures which we have taken maybe environment is degrading itself those uh, and the surfaces actually are the uh, after that the degradation rate will enhance or increase significantly. So, this is these are the factors which we need to account we need to consider. So, what we can say the factor affecting the air and, uh, atmospheric corrosion as I mentioned very clearly the initial condition whether there is a protective layer or coating or oxide layer which is generally formed naturally. Uh, uh, we have already covered in our course that whenever there is a metal surface kept in open environment there will be some sort of oxide layer on the surface which will act as a protective layer on that. And this layer act as a barrier uh, against the corrosion substance and uh, if this layer is removed or maybe uh, becomes uh, the, the penetratable or we say that the passivity of the oxide is decreasing because of one reason or another reason naturally it will affect overall uh, uh, rate and extent of subsequent corrosion. So, initially there may not be corrosion at all, but may be uh, because of the excessive wind, because of excessive rain and then, uh, and then uh, the protective layer has been removed from a surface where so quite possible uh, subse subsequent corrosion will be. Uh, phenomenal or increases severely that may be considered from that point of view. Now, as I already mentioned about the wetness duration uh, precipitation as I mentioned also rain there is a possibility of the dew or fog, dust particles, temperature, uh, exposure condition, sheltering, wind speed, pollutant and other. Now, one major thing is that are these uh, factor working independently or synergetically our major worry is that these factor work together, they work synergetically, they do not work alone as such and that makes this whole uh, lecture more important, more interesting 
that we need to consider so many factor and we should have a clear idea about interaction of these factors. So, that you know, overall uh, we understand what will happen to the product, how it will impact. If I want to really express in my other words, what we say that uh, I mentioned very clearly the wetness. Now, wetness times as I say the length of the time a metal surface remain moist. Uh, if there is a and the immediately we are removing the water content naturally the uh, exposure will not be sufficient or uh, maybe say that it will not really cause any damage such, uh, as such. However, extended period of the dampness gives a moisture ample opportunity to react with the metal resulting in accelerated corrosion rate. We use the word rain, condensation and fog which can initiate the corrosion, uh, corrosion process not necessary there was a corrosion at all initially, but because of the, and the, the this kind of uh, environmental process and then uh, there is a possibility of initiation of the some corrosion action has started. Now, that because of the it has started it will contaminate the surface. Now, question comes um, and if there is excess of water what will happen it will erode the surface itself. So, a, a kind of a surface which was a hard enough now because of the corrosion softness has increased porosity has increased and because of that the, the erosion resistance has come down significantly. So, rainwater can erode that material. Now, uh, sometime this rainwater itself contains uh, gases which we use the word uh, dissolved gases are contaminant that will naturally increase the corrosion rate. Now, dust or uh, airborne particle which can be the, you know, the taken away by uh, air itself, uh, sometime they settle on the metal surface and uh, they, they, they make a some sort of thin layer and uh, we know the carbon suit is uh, one of the common uh, example from automobiles coming out and uh, the, the, the directly coming on the surface and forms a kind of a barrier layer. Now, what will happen if there is a LED some sort of uh, corrosion on a surface and this layer comes on and stays on that surface. So, we will not be able to see from a top what is really happening, but corrosion will continue in a bigger way. There will not be evaporation of the water, there will not be removal of the water and the naturally damping time or maybe say wetness time will increase significantly. So, this is uh, where the major problem comes that is why the, they, these uh, different kind of uh, and, uh, the, uh, factors are affecting each other and we say that uh, this layer can accelerate the corrosion by extending the duration of the moisture and uh, main thing is it is provide kind of uh, facility uh, to the electrochemical cell or a kind of uh, a corrosion cell. So, that that is what uh, really uh, the, the, the affect the overall surface or the increases the surface degradation rate. We uh, also in previous uh, slide also we mentioned that high temperature increases the activity of the corrosion agents and in, um, uh, in addition temperature fluctuation as I said because of the change in uh, thermal expansion coefficient what will happen uh, sometime there is also because of the temperature variation condition uh, condensation of the water vapor also forms or occurs that will again increase the contribution to the corrosion. And, uh, if, if we are able to cover some surface like you know, if I want to design some surface and I know that it will be getting exposure to the uh, environment and I want to provide a some sort of a shelter some sort of box on the surface naturally that in this case uh, sheltering will reduce the level of exposure to the environment element and that will overall um, and have a better control on corrosion. So, if I know uh, by study which, which uh, the system is um, and, uh, the sensitive towards the environment and then if we are able to figure out completely and we are able to provide a separate uh, shelter or maybe a separate box around the metal or the, and around that uh, system it will really help us uh, to reduce overall corrosion. So, what we say that as a result of this uh, sheltering uh, it will reduce exposure to the, uh, the, the environment and then uh, there will not be rain particles, there will not be one wind borne contamination naturally the corrosion rate can be kept in under control. So, in overall system uh, maybe I have a 100 parts and I know the 5 parts are more sensitive because every metal has a different kind of sensitivity towards the environment and if we know if we have a knowledge if we have understanding naturally we can make a very good product and which have a much uh, the more service life compared to without having a knowledge about this. Now, 
another uh, when we thought uh, this case something like about the erosion we say very clearly the wind velocity that is the carrier fluid can influence the corrosion by accelerating the evaporation or the moisture in this case. Now, here the two factors I am trying to consider here if there is a rain and then there is a wind also quite possible that uh, moisture can get evaporated. So, here the wind will help us, but if it are containing the particles which is coming along with the surface then it will really impact. What will happen in this situation? It will make a pits, in the pits itself the water will go and reside. So, again it will make an electrochemical cell here and that will increase the kind of uh, and then the corrosion rate. So, here if uh, in the, the well within control uh, when the wind velocity is able to evaporate because maybe say remove the moisture it will be beneficial, but if coming with a particle impinging on the surface making a pits and moisture goes inside and then make a some sort of electrochemical cell it will be very very harmful as such. So, another thing as I mentioned earlier that, um, that the air pollutant uh, uh, air contains something like you know, pollution may be uh, and uh, this is sulfur dioxide or nitrogen uh, dioxide or nitrogen oxide may be NO or NO2 both and carbon dioxide and maybe sometimes chlorates also which are available in environment then then it overall the corrosion rate will increase these and being these are the chemicals and then chemical uh, will have a naturally a more tendency to work uh, with a surface and then make a some sort of more pollutant or more corrosive products it can form also the acid and then um, and the increase uh, and the, the, the corrosion rate significantly. Now, I, I consider those kind of situation, but I want to really categorize this complete environment in few category. Why I say that there will be some sort of if am I making product for the rural area, am I making a product for the urban area, am I pro making product under the industrial uh, there is a more like closed one, but it is still uh, in, in industry we have a lot of environment or am I making product for the marine application or completely in row may be like in a household kind of things. So, if we uh, divide uh, uh, this kind of environment it really uh, helps us reason being we can really give a cost effective solution for a particular situation reason being what is the best for the rural development and the rural areas may not be the best for the urban areas whatever I am making uh, the, the best for the urban area uh, uh, other than industrial areas then uh, the whatever the best in urban area may not be the best for the industrial area and uh, same thing whatever I am making for the industrial area may not be good for the marine area because environment changes to some extreme and if we study those things naturally we will be able to provide a better product product. So, that is why I am saying the why classification is required reason being it helps to the scientists or maybe the engineers uh, to assess the potential corrosion risk. Uh, as I mentioned that our topic sometimes the people are using the word atmospheric corrosion. So, again I am continuing with that word a potential corrosion risk uh, for a particular environment. So, if I know that indoor environment naturally uh, corrosion risk will be different compared to rural area compared to urban area compared to industrial area and maybe as I say when I think about the marine area actually the, the, the corrosion risk will be quite different. So, what are the benefits uh, by this kind of classification we say that if we have information if we have sufficient information or knowledge uh, that can be you know, um, uh, um, used as a some sort of uh, tool to create the methods for protection or uh, against the surface and extending the life and durability of the products. So, when we consider the surface engineering topic we will return back to this topic and uh, when we think about surface engineering we are developing some sort of machine or some sort of case studies these points will be again considered. If I try to uh, uh, explain in other word we say there is a um, in the thing from a why classification has come we say there is a little human uh, activity and the relatively low level of the air pollution in a rural area. So, here the contaminations are lesser and then human activities are also lesser, lesser, lesser means a lesser population. And moreover uh, whatever the environment that mostly uh, is uh, consist of uh, influenced by the vegetable vegetation soils and some sort of a limited industrial activity we do not have a call uh, industrial activities in a village level. So, naturally uh, and, uh, um, we, we consider those aspects only the new thing will come may be one village to other village there may be possibility of some sort of uh, uh, local uh, geographic uh, change or maybe some sort of uh, uh, somewhere there will be more agriculture activities somewhere lesser agri agriculture activities. So, we consider those aspects 
or in fact if we are making machineries for the agriculture purpose naturally we need to think those directions. So, these are the important when we think from um, and then the rural point of view what are the environment and how we design the product according to that. Now, coming to the urban areas we say now here the human activities have increased because the population has increased and then the maybe the and then the we, we know that the various resources may be say the human waste itself or the number of waste which are be getting discarded without proper uh, uh, what is it the activities that will uh, increase in this manner. And then uh, naturally there will be more and more uh, pollutant and more and more vehicles, more and more uh, and, uh, automobiles and such and there is a possibility of more and more construction sites compared to the rural area. What will happen overall it will increase the atmospheric corrosion uh, rate than what we have uh, experienced in a rural areas. So, we can say the atmospheric uh, uh, and particularly uh, urban atmosphere contains elevated concentration of the sulphur dioxide compared to I mean just comparing with the rural area. So, it will have a high concentration of sulphur dioxide, high concentration of nitrogen oxide may be particulated matter or PM what we use many times even the VOCs also will be more compared to the village to volatile organic matter also may be more in this situation. So, uh, these uh, pollutants uh, come in and, uh, along with the moisture uh, and uh, what will happen that they will uh, try to enhance the corrosion rate. So, if I design something for the urban area I really wo go with a little more rigorous assuming that it will be really causing more uh, environmental uh, related factors and then uh, severity will increase. So, we need to consider those things. Coming to the industry I would say naturally industry in environment it has a many many corrosive uh, the gases, vapors, particles and then uh, what will happen even uh, and there is a possibility of acid like a sulfuric acid vapor there is a possibility maybe the minor uh, 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 ppm level, but it still we need to consider those aspects even HCl or maybe hydrochloric acid acid or chlorides and various metal oxides also will be there. So, uh, in the presence of this uh, corrosive agent uh, and the more of a high level of uh, humidity and uh, change in the temperature and uh, actually it will accelerate the corrosion uh, uh, of the material which are getting exposed to the, this kind of environment. Now, coming to the marine side what the marine side what is happening here that the, the presence of the uh, and the salt is also there. So, we can say the presence of salt laden air and high level of humidity uh, primarily affect the, uh, the atmospheric corrosion rate uh, basically the marine environment or even the coastal uh, environment where whatever the, you know, the even the vehicles or whatever that we are designing near the coastal area naturally we need to account those kind of things. And then uh, even the sea water which may be say sea vapor as such. Uh, nearby it may have a number of dissolved ions it may have be having some sort of chlorides also and you know the very well that uh, if the industry are really discarding the their uh, the water uh, directly in the sea naturally that contamination level will increase salinity level will increase and then uh, uh, would we say that um, the overall uh, um, corrosion rate will increase. So, if I look at the severity point of view rural area is easier one urban area is slightly uh, more difficult compared to the, uh, the rural area than industrial area is slightly more difficult compared to urban area, marine area is much more uh, difficult compared to these areas. So, we need to account and then uh, maybe if there is a, we know that what kind of environment, what kind of contaminant, what, are, what kind of uh, uh, pollution level will be there we can design things accordingly. However, uh, if it is not possible and we have to do everything from universal point of view then at least uh, this diagnosis will be very clear very easy that something which is failing in uh, urban area naturally analysis will be slightly different. If something is failing in industry uh, analysis will be different something is failing in a marine environment analysis will be different or root cause failure will be different. So, understanding of this environment will really help us that is why the this uh, the introductory lecture on environmental assisted surface degradation has been delivered or then the we are trying to help uh, in a manner that we are trying to over give an overview about this kind of environment. Now, uh, many times we feel the indoor environment is safe, but it is not always there reason being that uh, there is a possibility of uh, we are using the some sort of cleaning agents into the uh, everyday life or indoor environment 
those agent also leave some gases in environment and those uh, gases will create a some sort of chemical composition it will uh, in another the react with other systems and it will affect the corrosion. So, we can say the indoor environment also is a polluted and then we need to really consider those aspects also. Now, if I see from all this point of view I can say in my view environment means solar radiation, uh, it will have uh, and then some sort of uh, uh, contaminate, some sort of water vapor or humidity gases, some sort of a high temperature and acid also. So, we need to look at uh, from different level and then uh, another point important point is that this kind of atmospheric condition will vary from place to place also planet to planet and maybe say when we think about uh, uh, the, the latitude to the longitude uh, on our uh, earth surface it also will vary. So, uh, may it may not be easier for us to design something new only for one specific location, but maintenance can be changed, maintenance duration can be changed, failure analysis will be changed, remedial action also can be changed. So, we that is why we knowledge is very important. Now, here uh, we are trying to give us some sort of what is the really overall environment, we, we know the environment contain mainly nitrogen oxide, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide and some sort of uh, rare uh, gases also. Uh, there are some sort of a species in uh, environment, it can be ozone, it can be hydrogen peroxide, it can be sulfur dioxide, uh, hydrogen uh, sulfide or uh, maybe say nitric acid also, ammonia and then SCL and CL and another one formic acid or formaldehyde. In this case, well, now what is really important to uh, look at is that the, this label have been given uh, in uh, particularly the parts per billion. Now, everywhere indoor and outdoor comparison has been given. And if you look at the what has been given particularly for ammonia, we say the ammonia is indoor ammonia and the contents are more compared to outdoor. Another thing what is the really formic acid in this case they have even shown that formic acid is on, on higher side compared in, in indoor compared to outdoor. So, that is why we say that do not feel that indoor whatever we are doing that is a safe. Indoor may also uh, has a some sort of a contamination and we need to account of whenever we are designing something on this. The big question comes, we have a tabulator so many things, which one is the worst? What do I do? Now, in my view, uh, we say that uh, the deciding worst or good may not be so easy. So, we need to have again comprehensive knowledge, something like a nitrogen, oxygen and rare gases which we mentioned uh, is kind of neon or maybe krypton or maybe helium or maybe xenon or uh, make the most of the uh, troposphere. In this case troposphere is uh, what we say there is the lowest layer of uh, earth atmosphere. Since the uh, nitrogen and uh, uh, rare earth gas or maybe say rare gases do not interact with the metal surface they are more like inert and that is why we say that we do not have to consider those nitrogen no need, uh, uh, rare gases no need as such. However, we know very well that, that uh, oxygen plays very very important role because uh, uh, oxygen can really react with the surface and then, uh, and then it participates uh, in the various environments and uh, plays a very crucial load and wherever it is main thing it is accept the electrons also. So, we can say so uh, and the, it is a crucial load as a electron acceptor um, uh, particularly when we are talking about the cathodic uh, reaction which we have discussed in a corrosive environment in the chapter or maybe say lecture on the corrosion. So, another thing uh, which is a carbon dioxide. Uh, water. So, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water these are the main factor. So, I will say one of the worst is the oxygen, then carbon and the water vapor, then carbon dioxide. So, these factors should be considered uh, they, they, they have a more much more significance compared to the nitrogen or rare gases. So, if you look at the gases or maybe water vapor as a gas in this case. So, I will say they eliminate all other oxygen, uh, water vapor and carbon dioxide. And uh, it is unfortunate that many people have not considered carbon dioxide uh, and they say the contribution of carbon dioxide is negligible, we do not have to consider that. However, if you look at the ppm level is almost a 330 pp ppm level in our uh, troposphere and then uh, it, it really uh, can act as a acidification or the, it increases the acid level or maybe the, uh, reduces the pH level and, um, and then the increase the formation of the some sort of uh, hostile species which will really corrode the metal surface. So, carbon dioxide is important. So, again I am saying that uh, nitrogen is not that important, rare, rare gas is not important, 
oxygen, water vapor and carbon dioxide these are the important. And another one uh, when we think about uh, uh, other uh, species what are the really available species we say yeah, naturally uh, sulfur compounds which we have mentioned in earlier uh, uh, and the, the way we have seen the tabular form we say that sulfur uh, containing the sulfur dioxide or hydrogen and, uh, sulfide uh, are often considered a significant contributor to the uh, atmospheric uh, corrosion what is the reason for that because these species they make uh, they help to form the sulfuric acid and we know very well sulfuric acid is uh, really uh, it is corrosive particularly uh, for the metals and it can cause the severe damage. Now, coming to the nitrogen oxide, so here we are seeing the nitrogen is not significant, not, 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 not really considerable, but nitrogen oxide which comes mostly from uh, environment or maybe say automobiles that is uh, influential uh, pollutant and then it will increase uh, um, and the corrosion rate because again it forms a some sort of acid what we call as a nitric acid, nitric acid and uh, nitric acid is also corrosive in environment. Now, chlorine uh, compound or maybe say uh, some sort of uh, and the chlorine which is an, on an environment it can really uh, and, uh, form some sort of uh, hydrochloric acid or another one is uh, hypochlorous acid also what we use the word HOCl in this case which is also the corrosive to the metal. So, in this case particularly uh, uh, if, you, if you look at overall corrosive uh, rate we say the severity of corrosion uh, will depends on what is the really concentration level naturally there is always some limit lower than this limit uh, if there come any, any, uh, any uh, gas species or any element which has a concentration lower than certain limit will not affect uh, into the metal or to the material which is getting exposed to that. And but uh, if then the concentration more than that that it will have another one comes uh, what will be temperature and as the temperature changes this concentration also whatever is the bond on the concentration also will change uh, in the presence of moisture also will change or maybe the duration is exposure time is a 5 minutes or 1 hour 2 hours something like it also will change. So, overall impact will be kind of uh, all factor considered together and that will give results. So, just to elaborate that I am considering some sort of a case study what we say that the in this case particularly a uh, lead uh, uh, which is a, uh, 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 a tarnish free uh, lead coupon was uh, exposed to the Hubert uh, uh, carbonyl atmosphere uh, and in this case relative humidity was kept roughly 75 percent. And then uh, what we say that uh, uh, the carbonyl atmosphere has uh, three levels and then the three things which were being considered in this case and that has been used uh, some sort of a formic acid, formaldehyde or as a acidic acid to so, three exposure uh, to the late surface and when nothing is there it has been shown in air and then uh, this scale of the 10 micron has, has been shown here coming to the formic acid that has been represented as FA and coming to the formic acid and formaldehyde has been given the FA plus F coming to the on the, on the formic uh, uh, acid and acidic acid has been given in D. In E all three have been combined so formic acid, formaldehyde and then acidic uh, acid uh, has been combined and been exposed uh, to the surface and then it coming here to acidic acid alone. So, we have total 6 figures A, B, C, D, E, F, A does not have any exposure so that shows only the lead as such surface in clean environment what is the really the, um, the uh, SEM uh, photograph of this. Coming to the B, it is a basically formic acid. Coming to C, it is a combination of formic acid and formaldehyde. And coming to the D, is a combination of formic acid and acidic acid. Coming to E, it has all exposures, all the three combinations. And coming to F, it is only the acidic acid. Now, this is a being given, and then the here the it has been mentioned clearly that ppm level. So, ppm and V, V is basically specifying the volume it is not a mass it is a volume has been considered here and if you look at the all the ppm uh, v level with the maximum uh, ppm v level is has been given for the formaldehyde and interestingly formaldehyde is not affecting the lead surface. So, concluding that if formaldehyde is not affecting the lead it will not affect to any metal surface is not correct. Now, if you provide some sort of hydrogen oxide then there is a hydrogen peroxide then there is a possibility that this will also act. So, everything depends on the what is environment how what is the concentration. Now, even though very high concentration of uh, formaldehyde is not affecting surface you can compare A and C you do not find much noticeable difference. 
Now, coming uh, coming to the, uh, the, uh, the sorry A, uh, B and C, we do not find much difference. Some are difference will come because uh, formic acid has a some sort of uh, uh, the effect on the lead surface. Coming to the, the, the last one, uh, so the D in this case, we are able to see D and uh, E, uh, D and F, we find uh, is a, the effect as more or less same in this case or in fact the D, E, F more or less same. So, the mix main uh, contribution is coming from A, A. So, in this case uh, on the really uh, exposure of the acidic acid is really affecting the surface. So, that is a severe compared to other two while uh, formic acid comes in between and uh, that is that is why we are writing here the lead does not appear to have a corroded when exposed to the formaldehyde. So, when formaldehyde has uh, exposure to the surface uh, lead surface is not really affecting. Another one we say that this this can be say the null in the sense that the no observed adverse effect level it is a terminology has been utilized to find out what is the minimum concentration uh, below which uh, there will not be any uh, effect of the surface uh, any effect of the contamination on the surface degradation. So, uh, that is very important to understand. So, if I think from a novel point of view and, uh, and the express in the different form is so the late corrosion compound uh, are primarily uh, uh, formed when there is a acidic acid uh, present and uh, lead uh, corrodes more quickly than formic acid particularly when it is exposure is to acidic acid. So, uh, in this case uh, when there is a formic acid there will be some sort of uh, uh, acidic action or then there is a some sort of corrosion, but it will be much lesser than acidic acid alone as such. And, uh, and then uh, what is really happening is a formic acid also strongly reacts it is not that it is not reacting, but it is forming a passive layer that is a major point. Some chemicals they form layer on a surface and then they become a passive that means a second layer will not be formed or maybe only top one layer and that is what is a beneficial. Many times we uh, use the word oxide and you say that the contamination layer acts as a lubricant because that is a passive layer it will not allow metal to get exposure to the environment. So, it is a protective as such. And then uh, what we say that the uh, novel particularly NOAL for the formic acid is generally 0 0.1 ppm uh, and the ppm V uh, particularly the humidity level and naturally the humidity increases this level will increase. So, they, they as per the literature 0 0.1 ppm V is between the 54 to 75 percent relative humidity. If that is a, then the if it is a lesser than 0 0.1 ppm V effect will not be there if it is a more than that only the effect will be there. So, this is what we mentioned and as I mentioned very clearly formic acid tends to create a stable uh, film uh, predominantly made of the late format or the late format hydroxide uh, and then uh, it is really preventing further uh, the formation of any oxide layer. So, it, it is a stable it remains there like oxide layers. So, it is a stable it is kind of the naturally formed coating. So, it is a acceptable uh, and then it will, will be useful. However, uh, if there is a transportation of any device and there is a this layer LED been made on the lead surface, but because of the handling and because of the transit if the surface get a scratch naturally and the, the lead surface again the virgin lead surface will be exposed to the environment another layer will come. So, if there is a continuous uh, kind of uh, abrasion or erosion then this kind of a layer also will be very harmful for the product. So, there are different things if there is a mechanical action uh, then it uh, even the formation will be a problem. So, then in the situation formaldehyde will be far better coming to formic acid. However, if there is no mechanical action it is only chemi chemical then formic acid is ok it will not really deteriorate the surface significantly because only the top one layer will be made and it may act as a protective layer against uh, uh, the metal exposure. Now, uh, we, we are trying to cover uh, really uh, what is the environment and how it affects overall um, and then how it is really harmful for us. So, let us me consider one uh, uh, very interesting topic what we use the one satellites and that too in a low earth orbit and uh, LEO is a very norm, uh, well known um, thing and we say that uh, LEO orbit is uh, around the earth and the span is something like altitude is variation from a 200 kilometer to 2000 kilometer around our earth surface. Um, and then uh, if you use a, a satellite 
what will happen uh, in satellite may, may complete one cycle in uh, something like 88 minutes to 128 minutes. These are the rough figures uh, and then uh, maybe the newer newer satellite will may take a lesser time possibility is here. Now, why we, we are considering the, the LEO satellites, uh, what is the really popularity, why this we have been now in more use. Well, the reason being the, the, the their popularity is reason being that because they have been utilized for the internet access, the broadband, mobile communication, remote sensing. So, though this is a what we say digitized world in this is and this kind of satellites are very, very useful. Now, if these are so useful then why we are considering and this is not a topic uh, uh, related to digitization or digital thing, but major thing is environmental gas, environment and environmental degradation. So, we say that atmospheric gases something like oxygen, ozone, water vapor can accelerate the degradation of uh, satellites which are useful for the LEO. Reason being uh, these, these uh, contamination remain in a low earth orbit. So, low earth orbit this kind of contaminations are there or uh, this kind of environment and when the satellite has to be in this environment. So, that is uh, where the we really require a protection surfaces for satellite. Why reason being the way the atomic oxygen can erode and oxidize uh, on this exposed satellite sur surface and then it also keeps a limit also that uh, this satellite has to be removed after 2 months or after 5 months or after 10 months depends what kind of layer we have given. Another one is that also that uh, UV uh, uh, exposure uh, to the this kind of satellite. So, this is a environmental uh, contamination or environmental corrosion or environment damage surface degradation of the surface. So, this is a noticeable and then it should be considered now what is the really the problem with uh, satellite. We say uh, when we are designing something uh, if the relative speed is lesser then there will not be much erosion, but here satellite has to have a very high speed. So, that is why we say the satellite must maintain a fast speed to stay in orbit. If its speed is not on the maintain it will not be in an orbit. So, this complete design will change. And this is a what we call a impingement with a high velocity and impingement of ions will happen in atmosphere there will be number of ions it will be continuously impinging on a satellite and this, this impingement causes severe oxidation of the worn material because the surface which is getting exposure will be subjected to oxidation and again it will be material will be removed. So, continuously layer gets removed so that is why we really require something. Uh, a better material it will completely damage the otherwise this, this process will completely damage the crystalline structure. And what is the really significant and then the how do we observe it has been say the cutting and grew and then the cuts and then the groove maybe some sort of deformation has been observed on the surfaces. And uh, if the, the particles which are getting impinged on the surface and angle of attack is also right in uh, maybe the orientation is right then that is uh, the severity of the corrosion increase significantly. And then uh, and another one thing is comes as a, under the high pressure also is sometimes is subjected to. So, there is a abrasion, there is a erosion, there is a addition also and all are happening in our own environment to a, a satellite which is really very beneficial to the um, our society. So, that is why we want to consider one of the case study and then some sort of uh, observation on this kind of surface. So, here I am trying to show in this diagram there is a some sort of satellite and there is a earth environment. So, when you say that this satellite is a low earth orbit of satellite right and then it is a we are considering something like environmental degradation of this uh, alloy set, uh, satellite and then uh, we use the word here it will have a many environmental risk. It is not a one or two I showed some sort of uh, uh, abrasion, uh, abrasion, addition and erosion, but there is a possibility some sort of chemical action also. So, what we talk about something mechanical, but chemical also will act on the surface. So, this is a why we were saying now here the, 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 the contamination may be because of oxygen also and we will consider from where the atomic oxygen comes and then uh, why it has been there in environment we will consider those, but there is a naturally the photon uh, radiation will be there there will be number of charged particles. So, there will be some sort of high activity and temperature effect also will be there thermal cycling also effect will be there. So, it is something like a fatigue is also going to happen and on the top of that there will be particles which will be coming and hitting the surface at the high velocity because the satellite itself is moving at a high velocity and that is going to really impinge on the surface. So, there are the factors not only the atomic uh, oxygen which we will be considering, but there are number of other mechanical chemical factors or maybe say heat factors also. Now, what will happen in this situation 
when person is really designing and the person has to design thing also that other parameters like what is the really uh, other parameter like you know uh, length of mission whether it is really going for the how many months to the, uh, the, the to the orbit and then what on the relation with the solar cycle solar event and then the kind of exposure at what kind of orientation orientation uh, this satellite should have and what kind of exposure should have to the sun and then uh, and the, the and the particularly uh, and what velocity should maintain in this case so these are the factors uh, really overall affect the results now in this major thing is uh, and the, from the abrasion point of view i can think about the orbital debris or the od now why uh, the from where the od comes we, we you must have heard about the rockets about when the rockets are launched the some sort of uh, disintegration of the rockets will happen some solid particles will be remaining in a environment so this is what we say the solid rocket boosters and spent fuel uh, fuel the, the, the liquid uh, the fuel which has been already consumed is a one thing but what will happen the remaining fuel because that, that so this is not going to come back to our environment it will remain in the, in the kind of orbit and then the, this is a uh, causing a some sort of uh, uh, debris with German debris generation and that is this is the reason uh, when they have done a study they found that more, uh, more than a 50 percent of the metal um, and the material which goes uh, with the rocket it remains as a debris form it remains in environment and then uh, in 1980 somewhat they uh, established uh, one procedure what we call a passivation procedure and then they say that uh, uh, whatever the, the, the material it should should not really expose to the surface and then uh, and then because of passivation they had to release the, uh, the fuel which they the, this uh, rocket is carrying with uh, another and then the in as a, in the body as such so the fuel will be leaked out will be removed and will be kept in a environment there assuming that uh, and there will not be much uh, uh, damage reason being that if the fuel uh, is uh, intact in the rocket or into the, in the vehicle then the, there will be possibility of the more blast so I can say the from the what part passivation is started. So passivation involves releasing the rocket body, uh, bodies left over fuel, whatever the fuel was left in the rocket body, to stop them from a bursting. If the fuel remains there, then there's a possibility that what they have done in simulation, they found that there's a possibility of the bursting. And then if the, the bust ha and the bursting happens, then there will be more and more number of debris will come in environment to avoid uh, the more number of uh, uh, debris they release a liquid as such in this case. So, uh, and then that is what will happen in this case the liquid oxygen and hydrogen propellant which was used in a rocket is uh, left there or maybe the release into the environment, but that has become a now a major drawback. What is the reason that the collision and explosion of the fully uh, intact uh, intact uh, in the sunlight uh, to the large in the, the with this kind of uh, fuel which are in the remain uh, in the into the environment really there will be possibility of the, uh, the more uh, uh, we say that uh, erosion of the, uh, the satellite itself. So, this is important and we say that uh, if really uh, then the, and this kind of erosion happen and uh, unfortunately suppose that satellites can disintegrate into multiple bits it can be ranging from a very small size to the bigger debris then naturally it will have a much more uh, severe catastrophic failure. So, we want to avoid uh, the satellite uh, erosion holes in that because of the impingement and then because of the even though we know the particles will be there and debris will be there in environment even though passivation policy which has started in 1980 that reduces the number more number of debris, but still that whatever the, the, the ions which have been released in the environment atomic oxygen which has been released in the environment it will also have impact on a satellite body or satellite surfaces also. So, naturally we need to think how to avoid that what should be done. So, a lot of research has been done on that. So, I am just trying to present uh, one uh, research work uh, which was done and uh, we have picked up from a literature. So, here uh, you are able to see here that uh, in the case study uh, low, uh, low earth orbit satellite environment degradation they, they, they have mainly uh, focus only on atomic uh, oxygen exposure when atomic oxygen exposure is given to the surface what will happen to that. We say that the reason being atomic oxygen is very highly reactive and then uh, it can act as a uh, erosion um, against the capton foil which has been kept on the surface of uh, uh, satellite as such. 
naturally though th there is already foil on a satellite and now they are trying to figure out what will be remedy of this foil, what kind of a top layer or top coating should be done on this. So, they were trying to make a some sort of protective layer on the, and then increase the life of uh, this uh, captain foil. So, the, what they uh, created a some sort of a layer uh, 10 nanometer coating and of course, it can be 10 nanometer coating to the 100 nanometer coating of palladium material. So, it has been done and uh, as I mentioned here captain foil is something like a 25 mm. They, this has experiment has been done in the labs uh, and then uh, it has been prepared. So, this is uh, on the shown in the surface uh, 25 mm thick and then, uh, and then the, the scale has been shown 100 microns and A and B has been shown here in this case A in A case only the particle has been impinged and particle size has been given in this case particularly we say that uh, particle in the projectile a particle which is getting impinged on the surface is something like a roughly 1, uh, one mm in uh, and then my size and then um, it is a creating with this big hole one mm is a creating this big one hole and then the small holes are because of the you know, other uh, particles or other projectiles which is roughly uh, they have used a 100 uh, soda lime uh, glass particle assuming this will be the particles in the environment when there is a some sort of uh, uh, debris or so they are treating that this is the, the one mm size projectile is a debris 100 uh, micron soda lime is a debris and then it remains in environment. So, this uh, A shows a without oxygen in presence of oxygen, B shows a more uh, in presence of oxygen and then uh, when they expose this surface they found that uh, size of the, you know, the impingement or uh, maybe the whole size is increasing in presence of oxygen. So, this, this has been shown and then uh, uh, if you uh, also um, and the, the, they performed uh, more number of experiments to get a better results. In this case what they have shown A uh, that has been shown and then of course, they not only SCM they have also shown the back scattered electron image also and then they are comparing uh, this surface. They say the impacted uh, uh, 10 nano, uh, nanometer palladium coated foil with the foil which was there and they have coated it with the 10 uh, nanometer uh, thickness. And then they found that the whenever there is exposure of the uh, um, oxygen on this that will uh, create a increase the size as such. And uh, another one is that uh, um, the, the, the they, they found particularly the foil which has uh, oxygen almost 20 percent extra because this is a reference which we are picking and then this is impacted. Uh, with the projectiles and uh, this is a only exposures of atomic oxygen and now uh, atomic oxygen presence and impacting. So, in this case is only the impactment is kind of erosion of the surface, it is the only exposure of the atomic oxygen and this is a combination of these two. So, that is sure that has been shown that in this case the holes uh, are increasing in a significant size. You can see that this is erosion and this is erosion in uh, maybe say A and B is erosion as such has been shown and then E and F erosion in the, in the, in the presence of uh, um, what we say and the oxygen. Uh, even we are able to see when uh, C and D shows very clearly that uh, in the small holes uh, are uh, created itself in presence of the chemical activity of oxygen. So, this is important and we say that the size is increased significantly uh, or we say the damage increases significantly uh, in presence of oxygen. So, oxygen which was a leftover fuel and then the policy was made that the fuel should be released in the environment it will not really cause a debris, but because of that oxygen or atomic oxygen which is released in the environment it itself uh, increases uh, uh, the damage to the surface. So, that is why we say that it is important uh, to note that uh, and then the uh, and uh, whatever we were thinking that uh, uh, releasing the atomic uh, oxygen in the earth environment or earth orbit will not impact the uh, surface, but it in literature it has been found that is really uh, increasing the size. And another thing is that uh, you know, when they compare uh, the, the two cases when you say that only the particles are getting impinged which they assume initially the particles will remain there in, in that uh, low atmospheric uh, then, uh, orbit as such or LU uh, uh, orbit as such. In this case they have found is around 18 percent increase into the damage happens in the presence of uh, oxygen or atomic oxygen. Uh, particularly the center area and coming to the peripheral area or the corner area and they also have found that is around 13 percent increase in the damage. So, they try to reduce the particle sizes or uh, the debris, but oxygen which is getting released into environment because of uh, uh, to, to, to minimize the debris, 
but itself environment of oxygen increases the damage by 18 percent. Um, it may be the, the, the just a lab experiment in reality they have not done it. So, maybe more research is required to conclude, but I am just trying to say in this case something was done for the betterment, but that it itself uh, oxygen which was released in environment that also indicate there is a possibility of the damage. So, we will continue this uh, lecture in our uh, lecture 14. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.